Hello world, how's it going? I hope you guys are doing well. If not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. So today's topic, get new fish, what to do, what should I do? I'm gonna show you how to do fish bass and what I found to be really, really helpful and has improved my success rate with new fish and treating any diseases or illnesses or even catching any before they even happen. So let's do this. So I got a couple new boxes here of fish to go through. We got a lot of rams. We got some Corydoras. We got some killifish. Um, and some, I think, Congo Tetras. Maybe a few other things, but I gotta go through all these. I'm gonna show you what I do with the new fish. All right, so here we got some rams. First, I'm gonna open up the bag. Pew! Kind of stink. There is a lot of them in there. Check the water temperature, make sure it's about room temp. And I'll go peel off the top. helps to have a plug for your drain but with my tap water I have a carbon block so I can do this I can uh, pretty much clean up the bag a little bit before I put them in this container to get the big debris away like there's guppy grass sometimes duckweed other stuff you don't want in your aquarium this is a good way to just use the bag as a container but if you don't have a carbon block on your house line you can use your aquarium water and like many of you don't have carbon blocks but you do have aquariums you just scoop it up with the pitcher and then you can just run it through that way give them a fish bath so i'll do this a couple times just to kind of clear them out same thing as doing them in one of these containers down here and then a little trick to uh See, usually they'll school down towards the bottom so it's easy to get them out but if they are wily you can kind of pinch it a little bit and direct the water that way you can create your reservoir and then empty it that way but I can get most of that water out of this bag but remember the heavier stuff's gonna sit at the bottom so you do kind of want it stirred up the more you can get off the bottom the better I may be able to clean this whole bag up in the bag. And water pressure is important as well. That way you're not really being violent with the water. Here you can see how I've got it going better now where it's just flowing in there and filling it up. With as much water that was in it in the beginning, it wasn't such a problem, but with the lower water level, you do gotta watch that because you don't wanna beat your fish up with the water. Something to think about. All right, so we did that a couple times. Last empty in here. Come on, guy, get on back there. And I do have my drain with a strainer just in case. You can use a fish net or something else if you don't have a strainer. But I am going to go ahead and run these through a net to get my net wet. It's always important to get your net wet first. If you put them on a dry net, that has a potential of messing up their skin coat, which can cause problems that some of us may think are diseases, but it's just damaged skin coat due to our dry nets. And since there's like 20 or 30 of these, I'm not even sure. I'm gonna split them up. Get a little rinsey poo and a dumper roo. Get that net of rinse too. Get any big chunks that were on it. And that way we can use these containers down here to inspect them. Go, 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 go. That holds more of the gravel and everything still in there. Give these guys a little rinse. Alright, 
Boom. Boom. have 40 blue rams here these came from the dark nights these are actually the runts of the litter got them from john Stoller, a really good breeder he's been breeding a lot of rams and i'm gonna share them with you guys and they needed good new homes and i know you guys can help provide that for them so they won't get big like the others. They may, I don't know, over time and water changes, but they'll be dwarf dwarfs. And as we observe the fish in here, we do check the body, make sure that there's nothing attached to it or protruding through it. That way we can identify anything that we may need to do it. Now, as far as their breathing, that's mostly stress, which they'll cool down once they get settled down. You can see that they're moving now. They were just staying still because that's their natural response. For the next step with these guys, it's just time to scoop them and put them into their QT and container, which I think we'll start now. Oh no! Crap. Come on, little guy. Oh no. There we go. So, yeah, that's it. As far as medication, I don't use any meds unless I absolutely have to. Like if something popped up on them or something, ick, I would use Ruby Reef Kick Ick in a combo with Rally. And if I saw worms, you can use either Finbendazol or Prazi Quintel. And as far as bacteria or fungus, I like to use organic peat moss which is really great for fighting off bacterial and fungals. As you can see, I got quite a bit of my QT lined up with that stuff because it does add that extra benefit to the water to help fight off any of those unwanted things. And also softer water helps as well when it comes to cleaning your fish off. Often the hardest problem with keeping cardinal fish and getting them to stay alive after you get them is because they are used to soft water though and they're not used to the bacteria. it takes a little well some a slow process to get their immune system up to be able to ward off some of that bacteria that'll be in harder water but you can't keep them in harder water the cardinal tetras and if the peat moss wasn't able to help their stress coat or their skin coat and it was all just withering away and it was getting real bad, I would use Guard from Fritz. It helps with their slime coat. Um, that's the biggest part of new fish is making sure that they have a healthy natural slime coat. If their slime coat gets damaged, it can start getting all kinds of funky for them. You'll see it happen fast and often with some fish especially from imports and stuff like that if just mishandled and just stressed out and had issues with their stress coat or slime coat. And as far as the containers, go ahead and rinse those out, fill them back up onto the next one, repeat cycle obviously. I got a lot to run through here. My members, I'll be letting you know what I got first. Um, same with my Patreons. It's definitely appreciated and I thank you all for the support. As far as rinsing nets and containers, I use extremely hot water, 120 degrees, to sanitize my nets and my containers. They work. Enough. No bleach, please. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Without you guys, we couldn't be doing all this stuff and your support is super appreciated. And if you guys can hit some like buttons, I could use like buttons. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. That would be great too. And until next time, everybody, peace. Have a great one. I hope this helps some of you guys.